and Americ in the house coming to us live from Phoenix, Arizona. And Americ, my man, how are you this evening? Looks like he's in Florida. Jimmy Flash, what is up, boys? <laughs> oh, and man. correction, I am not coming to you from Phoenix, Arizona. I'm in Disneyland, son. Happy <laughs> Halloween, everybody. Yeah, that is scary, fool. Look at the clip oh, of that. Oh, my God, man. <laughs> Jesus. I want to see what he's got below the camera. He ain't got that Minnie Mouse skirt on, is he? Oh, is it? Hopefully he's wearing pants. But, uh, yeah, no, my, here we my go. My daughter's wearing that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Can you believe this is our fight expert? <laughs> hey, he looks as if he's pumped up. He is, does look pumped up. Set the stage for us, Anna Merrick. Where are we this weekend? We're going to MSG, Jimmy. We are going to the fight capital of the world, Madison Square Garden, where some of the biggest fights, boxing and MMA, have taken place. And this is UFC 244. This is for the baddest mother effer belt. This is going to be the biggest fight of the entire fight year. It is stacked from top to bottom. The prelims could have been a pay-per-view card. It is awesome, and I can't wait. Well, let's uh, get into this because you have a ton of looks, so we have to be a little bit tighter with our moves here on this show. We're also, after you drop all your looks, we're going to show our Mr. Fat Fist video and see what you think of his looks. So let's get it started, Flash. What's the first look that you are interested in? Uh, well, the first one is going to be Duwada versus Archie. It's like, uh, I look at all these uh, fights, and none of, them are, none of them are absolutely championship. And yet they're all top draw. Can you hear me all right? I couldn't hear you there for a second. Can you repeat that for me? Sure. Yeah, we've got Duwada versus Arche. Okay, so Duwadu versus Arche. I love Hakeem Duwadu in this spot, guys. He was an amateur Muay Thai fighter before he transitioned over to MMA. He had a 42-5 and five Muay Thai record with 15 wins by KO before he went pro. Then he amassed a 12-0 and 0 record with nine KOs. The dude's striking pedigree is off the charts. Now, Arce has a sick ground game, but Duwadu has a, uh, I believe it's a 94% takedown defense rating, so this thing ain't hitting the ground. I think Duwadu pieces him up over the course of 15 minutes, and if he doesn't get the knockout, he runs away on the cards. Real quick here, I'm going to use my aerial wand to make my ears disappear. So people tuning into the show don't think that uh <laughs> don't think we're doing the wrong thing here <laughs> <laughs> all right okay there's the first look on the card i'm gonna pull up the fight lines here at sportsbook review the sbr odds page go to fighting go to ufc and let's look at the market moves for the next fight we're going to talk about lyman good first chance chance opening up at plus 110 there's been a seven cent move towards chance how are you breaking down this fight I am on that seven cent move, Jimmy. Lyman Good is a physical beast. He's an absolute monster. But the last time we broke him down, he was facing jujitsu ace Damian Maya. Maya took him down and submitted him in about a minute. This dude's got no ground game. Now, granted, coming in here against Chance Rencounter, that's probably all he's been working on. But you can't catch up to the level of ground game this kid brings to the table in, you know, six months, nine months. It's just not going to happen. So Lyman Good's going to be in control on the feet, but as soon as Ring Counter gets his arms around him and it hits the mat, this fight is over. I love the dog. I got Ring Counter at plus 105. Ring Counter at plus 105. Next look on the card. Jennifer Meyer and Kuchigan. This one's pretty easy, guys. Chukagian is 12 and 2. She is a decision machine. If you can't come in there and outfootwork her, she is going to outfootwork you. And I love Jennifer Maya. She's a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt on the mat, but she will be outclassed on the feet. I've got Chukagian taking this thing by decision on the prop at uh, minus 110. Next look is the big Andre Orsky fight. Uh, Rosenstruck. Opening up as a minus 156 favorite, a two cent move towards Rosenstruck. Are you making a move on Rosenstruck or backing Orlovsky? Okay, I'm on Rosenstruck on this one. Now, he's got a glaring hole in his game, which is his ground game, but Orlovsky has showed no interest in taking his fights to the ground later in his career. He wants to stand and bang. Maybe he'll put you up against the fence, but he just doesn't go for takedowns. So if he's not going to come in here and put Rosenstruck on his back, Rosenstruck's going to knock him out. This dude is another guy with a significant record prior to his MMA career. He's got a 76-6 and six record in kickboxing with 64 KOs. I'm all over Rosenstruck. Okay, we've got Shabazz and Tavares. 
I'm just going to ride the undefeated fighter here, guys. I usually like to fade people stepping up in competition, but Shabazian is something special. And at a pick em price, I think we got to take him. All right. At a pick em price, let's keep rolling right now. We have the next look on your card is Gregor Gillespie versus Kevin Lee. Lee opening up at plus 135, now plus 130. What's your move here? So on this one, it's a bit of a sketchy situation. Gillespie is a phenomenal wrestler. He's undefeated, but Lee is bigger, and he's found his home at TriStar Gym. This kid's got all the ability to be a world champion. He's got all the athletic, physical gifts. He's just got to put it all together, and I think this is the fight where that happens. I think there's value on the dog, and I'm going to roll with Kevin Lee. All right, rolling with Kevin Lee. Okay, what about even Ivan Lewis? Because there seems to be massive discrepancy on the books. This is the fight that I think is my favorite bet on the entire card, Flash. I don't understand how Derek Lewis is the underdog here. He's the bigger fighter. Ivanov doesn't bring anything to the table that's going to get in his way. Lewis has a new workout and nutritionist coach. He's coming in in better shape than we've ever seen him. And if you can get him at even money or plus 110, I am all over Derek Lewis in this spot. I think he wins by knockout. Next up, we have the Steven Thompson fight. Let's take a look at it first. Vicente Luque, uh, Thompson opening up at minus 138, a 30 cent move towards the dog. Now it's a pick 'em. What's your move here? I'm on that dog, Jimmy. I got Luque at plus 105. Thompson is a great fighter, but he has been figured out. He's on a downward trend, and he has had his brain rattled in every single one of his last five fights. His whole thing was he didn't get hit and he didn't take damage. Well, he's been rocked, knocked down, or knocked out in every single one of his last five fights. Luque throws bombs, and he's got 15 minutes to find that button. I think he does. I like Vicente Luque. Okay, UK's Darren Till against Kelvin Gastelum. Step too far for the UK, boy. Yeah, definitely too far. It's Darren Till's first fight up at 185 pounds, and he's coming in way too deep. Kelvin Gastelum just fought Israel Adesanya for the vacant 185 belt, and they went full 25 minutes in a fight of the year candidate. That's not the kind of guy you kick off your entrance to a new weight class with. Darren Till actually was just on the plane. He had visa issues, and he landed less than 24 hours ago. He's going to be getting off the plane and getting ready to fight in about a 24 to 48 hour window. That's going to add a lot of pressure to his trip here. I got Kelvin Gastelum at minus 190. I think he can win this thing inside the distance, but it wouldn't shock me if he boxes him up for the full 15 and goes to decision. Wow, yeah, big move towards Gastelum. And then we get to the fight that everybody wants to talk about, Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz opening at plus 155. Now plus 142. Money coming in on Nate Diaz. Do you agree with this market move? Here's the big fight of the night. Yeah, I agree with the market move, Jimmy. I'm, uh, I'm one of those people that's on Diaz. I snagged him at plus 155. I just think this line is way too wide. To be realistic about this fight, it's an awesome matchup. Both these guys are great. But you know what? Neither of them are anywhere close to getting a title shot. It is a mid-tier fight at best. And... To see Masvidal as big of a favorite as he was, I think is disrespectful. He's got speed, he's got crisp boxing, he's got power. But Diaz brings incredible durability, volume, and a never-quit attitude to the mat, as well as a Brazilian jiu-jitsu game that rivals some of the highest-level black belts in the cage. These guys are going to throw the rule book and they're going to throw the game plans out the window. And when that happens, you never know what's going to happen. So I'm going to ride with the dog here because I see this is about a coin flip fight. Getting plus 155 on Diaz. Let's go 209. Come on, Mickey Mouse. Give me the parlay. <laughs> the parlay is one of my favorite things on the card. We've got Shane Burgos. His opponent, Makwan Amirakarni, is a ground specialist. The dude is sick if this thing hits the mat. However, Shane Burgos has a 94% takedown defense rate. He doesn't go to the mat unless he wants it to go to the mat. He's going to have a three-inch reach advantage, and Makwan Amirakarni doesn't have hands. Dude's hittable. I think Shane Burgos wins this thing by KO, and I'm going to parlay him with Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker from Brazil is the UFC's hottest rising star. He's at 205. He's calling out John Jones, and he's getting uh, he's getting Anderson, Corey Anderson, who is a wrestling specialist. Corey Anderson, he's got 
a good gas tank, and he's got a good wrestling game, but the dude doesn't like to get hit. Every time he gets hit, he stiffens up, he backs up, and his chin is straight up in the air. That's a recipe for disaster when you've got an explosive, athletic KO kill striker like Johnny Walker coming at you. I think Johnny Walker lands one of those big patented knees and puts him out cold. We've got two favorites here that give us plus 128, and I love that parlay. Yeah, it looks good. Let's go over quickly our guy and Americ's action. He's on Duwadu, minus 138. Recontour, plus 105. Shukagin, by decision, minus 110. Rosenstruck, minus 150. Shabazian, minus 120. Kevin Lee, plus 140. Derek Lewis, plus 113. Luke, plus 105. Gastelum, minus 190. But the line's moved so much because of Till's travel. So he says if you want to parlay it or try it inside the distance, Diaz, plus 155. And the Burgos Walker par uh, parlay at plus 128. Now let's keep you here. Uh, Clint, let's keep you here, Anna Merrick, so we can hear our Mr. Fat Fist video together and hear what you think of his looks on this card. Rafa, my man, can we have Mr. Fat Fist video popping off right now? What's up, Jimmy? What's up, Flash? What's up, little baggers? Mr. Fat Fist ain't here. Uh, it's Barry Finkel Ihorn filling in for him. Um, Mr. Fat Fisty, he decided to go get a massage, if that's what you want to call it, uh, for lunch break today. So I'll be filling in. But he did want me to rally off his three winners from last week, which was Douglas Lima at minus 149. And also, Random Marcos at minus 155. And Luma Lupame at minus 112. Three straight caches. And also a lean towards Damian Maya at plus 125. So I hope y'all jumped on those, made some money. But on to this week's UFC 244, the BMF belt. We got Diaz versus Masvidal. And boy, we're going to have ourselves a nice little fight here. It's going to be bloody. I can guarantee that much. Uh, but on to my picks. We got Charlie Walker versus Corey Anderson. Listen, Corey Anderson looked good in his last three fights. Won all by an innocent decision. But guys like Patrick Cummins and Agent Glover Textera. And then you got that guy, Ira Latifi. I can't stand him. Anyways, won his last three fights by decision. Looked good. Johnny Walker has won his last three fights by a knockout and uh, viciously uh, dispatching Khalil Roundtree, Justin Ledette, and uh, what's his name here? That man uh, uh, oh here, yeah, Serkinov, Misha Serkinov. Yep, that man dropped like a goddamn sack of potatoes. But here, I like Johnny Walker, minus 155. You get him at Bookmaker. Make sure you jump on him quick because I promise you by tomorrow he'll be in the minus 200s. Now on to the next pick. Main event, Jorge Masvidal versus Nate Diaz. Listen, I love Nate Diaz with all my heart. That is my dude right there. But he called out the wrong guy. I didn't understand it. I don't know why he called out Jorge Game Bread Masvidal. Uh, yes, it sets up a great fight for that West Coast, East Coast gangster mumbo jumbo. But that being said, Jorge Masvidal is going to be the bigger guy. He's going to be the stronger guy. And he's got the better crisper striking. He hits a lot harder as well. On the way, Nate wins his fight is snatching some sort of choke on Jorge Masvidal. I just don't see that happen. I see this staying on the feet. Uh, that being said, also, Nate Diaz hasn't fought in two and a half years except for two months ago against Anthony Pettis. So he looked absolutely disgusting. That being said, easy pick right here. Jorge Masvidal pushing all the chips in here on this one. And that's it, fellas. You get him at minus 150 at Sports International. And that's all she wrote. Till next time, Barry Finkel Ihorn is out. And remember, Finkel is Ihorn. Ihorn is Finkel. <laughs> Man, who needs Mr. Fat Fist? I like he's, this Barry. He's going to get himself some chicken, that boy. Yeah, I they? like this guy. Got a hunting and a drinking. Like Barry Finkel Einhorn. Einhorn is Finkel. We've been talking about Ace Ventura Pet Detective all day. It was perfect, perfect thing <laughs> Finkel Einhorn. Einhorn is Finkel. Uh, what do you think of those two looks? I know one goes against you, but he's backing Walker and Masvidal. Yeah, it looks like we're going to go head-to-head -head on the main event. I love it. Should have warned me. I'm impressed he stayed in character the whole time. I should have done my Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's a five-round fight. And like I said, I think this is a coin flip. It wouldn't surprise me one bit if Masvidal did come out on top. But I think if you're given a guy like Nate Diaz 25 minutes, the volume he brings to the table will eventually wear down and break Masvidal. And if this thing hits the mat, Diaz is snapping off a choke. I just think he's got more ways to win the fight, and the length of the fight actually lends itself to Diaz. Good luck, Fat Fist. We're going to go at it.
<laughs> I love it. I love it. There he is, Anne Merrick and Barry Einhorn Finkel giving us those looks. Anne Merrick, my man, tell us a little bit about your Die Hard MMA podcast. The Die Hard MMA podcast. I break down everything top to bottom for every single UFC event. I try to sprinkle some Bellator in there. You can find me on Twitter at Die Hard MMA Pod. I love to go back and forth with people. So if you've got questions, especially fight time, I'm always live. So if you want to ask about props or live bets or whatever, hit me up. That's where I'm at. Thank you guys for having me. Have a happy Halloween, everybody. And good luck on everybody's action this weekend. And you didn't even mention the NHL contest that you won. I don't want to rub it in oh, too much, right, Flash. Don't I mean, bother. I'm the MMA don't guy. Bother I already said last week that I won first place. Jimmy said it a couple times on the live show. Oh, I'm the NHL king for it. now. That, yeah, it's true. <laughs> There he is, Anna Merrick. Follow him at both his Twitter handles. One is Maximus in 3D. The other is a Die Hard MMA Pod. There he is. 